Hey guys, it's Bethany with ABQ Creations here with another tutorial for you. Today I'm going to show you one of my newest hobbies, and it's tumblers. I absolutely love the way that these have been turning out. I made a bunch for Christmas presents for people, and it's just a, been a fun pastime or hobby that I got into. So as you can see here, I'm just doing a voiceover because I thought it would be best to speed this one up. You can still see what I'm doing, but then it's not going to be like an hour and a half long tutorial. So um, basically I'm just mixing my epoxy here. You do equal parts A and B. So once I have that thoroughly mixed up, then I start applying it to the cup. You do have to pre-prep the cup. Um, so in this case, you'd want to sand it and then wash it with Dawn dish soap to get all of the oils off and then not touch it again <laughs> with your bare hands. Um, once you have it on the turner, which you can find these turners relatively cheaply on Amazon, actually. I was really impressed with that. Um, I think I got one for like around 30 bucks, and it came with this silicone brush and a bunch of other tools and gloves. Also, I'm doing a voiceover because you should always be wearing your proper PPE while working with epoxy. Um, it is toxic until it cures. Like once this is fully cured in three days, then it's no longer toxic. I'm using an art resin. I'm using KS UV art resin. So this is going to be my Milky Way tumbler. I think it just turned out gorgeous. Um, I've always been a big fan of the Milky Way style. And I saw a tutorial where I got this off of and it worked really well for me. Um, the woman I watched, though, she split it up into three tutorials. I don't even remember what her name was, but I thought that was kind of a lengthy process. So I figured I would do all the steps and then combine it into one video for you. So right now I'm torching the cup to get out all of those air bubbles. And while it's still wet and tacky, I am now going to go in and do my glitter. So I start with Bridesmaids. My favorite pink, by the way. It's just a beautiful rose gold. And so I kind of sprinkle it on in a swirl motion so that it kind of looks like it's swirling down the cup. And I wait. The reason I put the paper under is to catch any of the extra glitter. You always want to save your glitter if you can. So this means you have to pay attention and switch out the paper every time. But once I let that rotate a little bit and let all the excess fall off, then I collect the glitter and I dump it back into my jar. So no waste, or minimal waste, I should say. And this is going to peek out beyond the Milky Way once you add the swirls and the mica powder, which I'll get to that in the future. Um, so I'll, that's why I kind of just shake out the paper like that on top of the tumbler. It's okay if you kind of mix and match. But you always, the number one thing here to remember is when you start with your glitter, you want to apply the chunkiest glitters first. So there's Gold Rush. The last one was um, Girl's Best Friend, which is an amazing silver. So this is Gold Rush. These are all chunky glitters I'm starting with, and they're all from Glitter Chimp. And I just kind of fill in wherever I think the color would be a nice addition. Some people do start with their tumbler spray painted. I did not. I thought the silver would complement it anyway, so I was okay with that. And some people get really picky and get a whole new piece of paper every time because you can end up with stray glitter pieces um, flying through and getting into your other colors. So just be aware of that. Okay, now I'm shifting to, I think, a little bit finer of a, a... Oh, no, this is still a chunky one. I didn't show the name, but I show it after this. I kind of forgot. So it's Cherry Blossom. And it is a thicker glitter as well, kind of um, a little bit see-through in some parts, a little transparent, but still a pretty, pretty pink nonetheless. Okay. 
And there it is, cherry blossom. Okay, so this is Pink Ladies. This is a fine glitter. Now, once you have all of your thick spots filled in, then I go ahead and I do a fine glitter. And this is super pigmented. It's a little bit darker than the rest. But I just kind of sprinkle it in, adding some darker color and dimension, kind of along the lines of the pinks, um, sometimes between the gold and the silver, just to kind of add lines of color to kind of make it pop a little bit more so it doesn't all just blend together. So the fine glitter really does a nice job of, of filling in all of the spaces and adhering to any sticky epoxy spots. Okay, now this is a little bit of a messy part. <laughs> But I always save this for last. I went back with Bridesmaid. That's just my favorite. I, I feel like that ties all the colors together. And you just basically have to throw it at the bottom. Um, like I said, it's messy. You lose most of your bottle of glitter during this process. But like I said, I save it on the paper. And so I can dump it right back up. But it's uh, just kind of a tricky part. You don't want to hit the cup, obviously, with the glitter container. So it's a little bit of trial and error. But you just dump on as much as you can until the bottom gets covered. So this is a really important step. Um, I'm putting my gloves back on for this step because you wanna pat down your glitter. Um, it gets really, with the chunky glitter, it can stick out and then it you'd have to have layer upon layer of epoxy to really cover that or you'd have to do a lot of sanding. And I wanna make that effort minimal. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking my finger and just pressing it flat all the way around. I just quick tap and I can push it down and you can kind of already see a difference in the top part of the cup where I'm pressing down as opposed to other spots yet. And you'll feel it, you'll feel the glitter flatten up for you. Um, it's not perfect, you're still going to obviously need more layers of epoxy and a little bit of sanding, but again, this just helps minimize it and gives it a cleaner, nicer, finished look. And while you guys are watching this, let me know if you guys like these kind of tutorials. Um, I've really gotten into tumblers. I think there's a lot of fun things you can do with them. And it's fun to make just for yourself or your family members. Uh, lots of neat resources out there. So if you guys are interested in these, please let me know because I would love to continue to make more of these and show you different methods and practices that I've found to be helpful. Also, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you do like it and share with your friends and make sure when you subscribe to my channel you hit that bell icon so you can stay up to date on all of my current tutorials. I did recently start a new job so I really haven't been posting much. I apologize guys. Um, in fact my mom's she shed is done now <laughs> and I have backlogs of video footage that I need to throw into videos so that I can update you and show you the latest and greatest on that front. But my mom is loving her she shed and it's been put to great use. She's actually the one who started getting on the tumbler kick before me and so I have been um, joining in because of her. Okay, so I'm just kind of grabbing some scrap glitter that had fallen from when I was touching all of the glitter on the cup and I'm just kind of piecing it onto any spots that may have been missed on the bottom where I felt like it was a little tacky. Sometimes I get better coverage. Um, this time it was a little spotty, so. But it will completely be taken care of um, once we add our mica powder to our resin and start adding some of that. So after you get your glitter all pressed down, you want to let that spin. Um, oh, yep, here's my cleanup. 
I almost always forget to mention this or record it, but I remember this time. So I'm taking it and cleaning off some of my tools right away before the resin can cure it. All you need is some isopropyl alcohol and you can reuse um, a lot of your tools. And those are silicone cups that I had applied part A and B to before I mixed it. And again, if you just add some alcohol to it right away, um, you can wipe it out. It's less of a sticky mess the next day and it'll be ready to go when you need to add more of your epoxy to your cup. So just a little tip that I have for you and you can do this with all of your supplies and reuse them. Um, even the plastic cup that I had used in the beginning to mix them together. You can always clean out your supplies before it cures. And if you do have any extra resin, you don't want to waste that. You definitely want to try to get some silicone molds so that you can apply it to that. And then you get extra little fun trinkets and things. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is clean up the lip of the inside of the cup. Well, I guess I'm cleaning up my hands here. Um, but then I will get to where I clean up the lip of the cup because you want to make sure that none of the resin has leaked in to the inside. So this is, I slowed down the video, this is real time footage, but this is where I'm cleaning it. And so you just take a little bit of um, the isopropyl alcohol, put it on a clean paper towel, and just let the cup turner do the work for you. And then this will prevent you from having to scrape the inside of your cup with either an X-Acto knife later once it's cured, or um, trying to sand it. So this is just a really nice method. It's very easy as long as you get it while it's still wet and you just clean up your cup. And I'm just double checking here. I'm looking inside the cup to make sure that I don't see any other epoxy spots that made its way into the cup. Okay, so you let that spin for eight, um, eight to 12 hours. It has to at least spin for eight hours, but to, f to cure it, to fully cure the first round where it's not really sticky at all is 12 hours. A full, full cure though is three days. So you have to keep that in mind. You wouldn't want to give away the cup. So now what I'm doing is I mixed up some more epoxy. Glitter does soak up the resin. So you might need more this go around than you did for the first layer of your cup. I honestly don't know amounts guys. I've just been kind of eyeballing it. I apologize. Um, but it, it's not a lot. I mean, I just, apply this over um, and kind of smooth it out, spreading it from the center towards the outside, and then just kind of getting it wherever it's missing. And I, again, I don't do a super thick coat, just enough to make it so that it covers the glitter and I don't end up with any super rough spots or, you know, glitter patches that I missed where the glitter will come off. So this one isn't as much of a fun artistic step, but it's another step you have to remember to do. So you'll need this done for your next step so that the uh, resin with the mica powders flows a little bit nicer on the cup. So it's like a little bit smoother and doesn't run into the glitter issue where it's too chunky and starts to come off. And I just go until it's kind of smoothed out. Um, and I feel like I have enough of an even coverage. Again, you will have some glitters that stick up. And I do take care of that um, coming up just to kind of smooth it out a little. And then it lessens how much layers of epoxy you need. So I get the sides really good. And then I get the bottom. Kind of move some of that resin down. So for the bottom, I feel like it's kind of easier just to take my silicone tool and scoop it out. Some people like to apply their resin with their fingers, with a gloved finger. Um, I've done that on some cups. I kind of got used to using this tool, though, and found that it was extra handy, and I could just kind of glide it and smooth it around. I, I just seem like I had better results personally 
But again, I understand that different people have different preferences, and that's okay. I just kind of check and make sure I really look at the cup and see if I have enough epoxy on there and if it's flowing. Okay, so this would be um, the eight hours later. It should be. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just adding a little extra. I think I had a little bit of extra and I came back and decided to add it. Just making sure to use up all of the resin in the cup because again, I didn't want to be wasteful. And a little extra just means a little extra flow and kind of smoothing out the glitter spots. Okay, so now I'm torching it. Um, honestly, the bubbles over this wouldn't be super noticeable in the end just because of the next step that we'll do to cover some of it. And with all of that glitter in the background, it's, it's pretty busy right now. <laughs> but it's just a good thing to do. I like to do it because, number one, it does get rid of the bubbles. And number two, it helps the resin to flow on the cup. So I feel like it's going to get more even coverage. And if I applied it a little thicker in some spots, then it'll even itself out through the eight hours that it's on the turner. Again, always remember to clean off the cup. Um, you'll have to do that at each step, unless you don't go all the way up, but I like to go all the way up to the top. So this is where I let it cure for the 12 hours because I feel like it's still a little tacky at eight hours. But once you've got 12 hours or more, you can go ahead and sand it. Um, I'm using a 220 grit sandpaper and you can use blocks, which I think I switched to here. Um, and what that will do is it, it, it's just another tool helps make it a little bit easier. So I'm getting off all of those rough patches and just, I'm not being too particular about it because I still have some more epoxy to apply, but just getting a, a good start on it so that, it, again, it minimizes how much more epoxy that you have to do. So once you're done sanding it, you wanna go and rinse off the cup and get the residue off. So you'd wanna get all that powder off, um, again, using Dawn dish soap and then drying it really well and popping it back on your turner so that you can add the next layer of epoxy. So it looks rough right now, but when you get the next layer of epoxy on, it smooths it out again and you can't even tell. Okay, so I got my tumbler spinning again. And again, I always like it going in this direction. My tumbler turner can spin in either direction. I just got used to doing it this way, um, but it really is just personal preference. I would say just whatever you do, maybe be consistent. It, you just kind of get used to the process, I think. So right now I'm applying just a clear coat of epoxy. And then I am I made some extra epoxy up though because I'm going to need to mix my colors for my swirls now. So as soon as I get this um, coat applied, not a super thin coat, kind of like a medium coat so that it'll flow and that'll help kind of the colors mix a little more. But then I'll show you what powders and whatnot that I add.
Okay, so I'm torching it again. This will help it to flow, especially once I add the mica powders with the resin. And those little torches are really nice. I think I got a four pack online on Amazon. So I will try to link to the supplies down below. I feel like they're really helpful. I got these nice black gloves as well that fit my hands a little bit better. The, the ones that came with my Turner kit just were too big. Okay, so I start with the white first and I do that casting and I do the pinata blanco. And I added five drops of each to just a little bit of resin. Um, you'll need more of this color than the accent colors. I like to do three colors in mine. You can do as much or as little. Like if you just like it with a white, you can stick with that. I just like to add a little more depth and dimension. So after I had five drops of each, I mix it up really well. And I use the popsicle stick and just kind of apply it with that. And so at first I just kind of drip it on like I let it kind of smoothly go on. And then I take my popsicle stick and you'll see that I actually touch the cup with it and I just kind of spread the color out and give it some, some added dimension like right there. And I just kind of keep it thick. I don't spread it around too much. I don't like to cover up too much of the glitter and you'll see that as time goes on it does spread out especially once you take the torch to it and you're adding other colors and it's just kind of mixing but I like to really um, spread it out like that and the reason I use these whites instead of just like a white mica powder is those always add like a sheen or a shimmer to it and I just want the solid white for this part because we will definitely add some sheen and shimmer. So you can see it's getting a little thick. Um, and I, again, it's just personal preference. And I try to be careful on the bottom. The bottom always ends up with little swirls for me. And I'm sure people out there, you know, will touch it up and, <clears throat> excuse me, have different methods for fixing that. But I don't mind it. I think it looks okay. I just like having a finished bottom. So I swirled around and sometimes it's nice to have a thicker strip like that one looks a little thicker right there and then you have a place to put a name like if you want to cut out some vinyl and add it to your creation. I don't show any of that in this tutorial. Um, if you guys want some Cricut tutorials I can maybe see what I can come up with. Um, again I'm, I'm not really sure what you guys are all into. Okay so here I'm taking that same cup the one that I just had the white in and I'm adding more resin to it because I like that it thickens it up a little bit and then adds a little more of a solid color to mix. But you could do this with clear resin as well. And I'm adding this Snow Caps Mica Powder from Glitter Chimp. And you just need a little bit. I think I just tapped in a very tiny bit. And it just will add this shimmer. So that's why I, want, I don't want to do the white too thick to begin with because I'm still going to add more white. And then I'll add one more color yet. So I count this as a different color because it's got the shimmer to it. And then it will just kind of fill in. I just add it right over the top in the middle of the other white. And then again, just spread it right around. Just adding that extra, extra touch. I will say, guys, um, just as a side note, because I saw my hair sticking down. Um, I didn't do it this time, but when I was first learning to do tumblers, I had my hair down and it got caught <laughs> in some extra resin that was sitting out in a mold. Not once, but twice. Two totally different times. Um, I was able to get it out of my hair because it was still wet. And so I was able to uh, use some alcohol and a paper towel and my lovely sister-in-law helped me out with it and help me get the purple resin out of my hair. All right, so this is a rose gold that I'm going to add. So wear your hair up. <laughs> when in doubt, wear your hair up. I should have it up here, but I don't. Um, so I'm taking a little bit of 
that gold resin and now I'm going rose gold and I'm going to pour it into a whole separate cup. So this is a new little cup. And again, I just like to save on supplies. So I, that's why I also combine the white with the, the um, snow cap. So there, I just took a very little bit, but you can see because this is pigment, you know, it's a mica powder, it's pigment. So it's very pigmented. <laughs> it's very, um, very strong. And so again, I add this over, I, I like to stick to where I've been applying it and just add the streaks in. So I've just kind of fill it in, add some to the white. It adds more dimension and depth. You know, it's these little touches that not everyone's going to notice, but when you look closer, you see it and it's just really pretty. It just adds a really nice effect. You could also do like a regular gold, um, pigment if you wanted to here, you know, just, you basically try to tie in, you could do silver, you tie in the colors that you added on your cup and just go with it. And any of that extra that you have there, um, it's just a tiny bit, but I made some extra jewels out of it on the side. I don't show that here, but you just don't want to waste any pigment um, or any resin if you don't have to. Okay, so now this is where it will move a little bit more. So you have to be careful not to torch this too much because if you like what you have, the torching will give it some more movement. So just be aware of that. Okay, so I paused it there, but then I realized that I had another step to do. I had to add a little sparse glitter. This is like the perfect glitter for the last step of this project because it just goes on so fine, but it still adds a little sparkle. So you can bring some of that back where you covered up. And so it, it just adds a whole new color. I had this really pretty copper kind of rose gold in this pack that I got. I got it for Christmas actually as a gift because, you know, people know I love glitter. So <laughs> it was um, the perfect added touch to the end step of these cups. And then I also realized that I didn't wipe down the inside of the cup. So I do go back and do that as well because again, I did apply more um, epoxy. So you want to make sure that you finish out with wiping down the inside of your cup every time you're applying epoxy and going right up to the lip. Because otherwise, if you miss a spot, you can still sand it out later or get an X-Acto knife, heat it up a little bit and try to carve it out. But you could scratch up the inside of the cup by doing that and it won't look as nice. And it's just more of a pain in the butt. It just, I don't like it. Um, this is such an easy step to do where you just, uh, that's where I paused it again. And then I'm like, oh no, I forgot to show it. So I wanted to make sure that I showed this step. So that's really it, guys. I mean, after this point, it would need another coat of clear epoxy after this cures. And that's where I like to do the vinyl step. So if I'm putting somebody's name on this cup, um, I would cut the vinyl and I would add it to it. Um, and then I would do one more coat of epoxy to seal it maybe two if I felt like I needed it and it didn't smooth out enough. But really, that last coat of epoxy um, should seal it up and be great. So this is what I ended up with, guys. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I really just, I, I don't know, I love it. I feel like this is art I can do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't usually feel like an artist, but I feel like these cups have been pretty fun. So I'll show you some other uh, cups that I've done as well. Um, but in the meantime, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a wonderful night. And please subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all of my current projects and tutorials. Thanks, guys. Have a great night.